Hi guys, it's Toby here. I am the Econ Business Coach. In this training today, I'm gonna to go through the six profit drivers, which include six levers that you can pull in your Econ business to maximize your profit. These are the six key areas that any Econ business needs to work on to maximize their profit. And at the end of the day, profit is the reason you are in business. So it's really important that you focus on these six levers to maximize your profit. Now, sometimes you might reinvest some of that profit back into your business to help future growth, but ultimately the business needs to be making a profit. So these levers are very important and they are the six key areas that you need to focus on in your business to help you maximize your profits too. I'll go through each one of them, give you a couple of examples and we'll go through some numbers as well. So buckle in, it's numbers time. Okay, we've established that getting some profit in your e-com business is really important. So let's unpack and look at those profit levers to work out how you can maximize the profit in your e-commerce business. To do this, I'm gonna show you a tool, we'll go for a tool that I use with my clients called the Profit Drivers, which will kind of unpack what those drivers are and then we can play around with some numbers so we'll see what that looks like. Now the key drivers, the six drivers, I'll fly through the six and then we'll unpack them in a bit more detail. The first one is driving new traffic to your site. The second step is then converting that traffic into customers. So they're two levers straight away. The third lever then is your average transaction value. So how much someone spends with you each time they shop. Then the next one is number of repeat sales, how often they come back and buy again. Then we look at your gross profit. So that's profit after paying your cost of sales or your cost of your product. And then your fixed cost of running the business. They're the six levers that we can play around with to help you maximize and improve your profit. Now you'll see on the left hand side, I've actually got them ordered in what order you should work on them in your econ business. And I'll explain why it's in that order in a second. But it, it says the first and foremost to start really at the bottom of this pile. So build up from the bottom. Now the purpose of that really is that by the time then we get to the top, which the last one, lever six, is more traffic, we've already maximized the others so that we know we're making the best use of that new traffic. New traffic is the most expensive strategy to implement. So we don't want to send to new traffic to a site where, for example, if we go in order, your fixed costs of running the business are too high, you're losing money. You're not making enough margin on the product anyway. So by increasing the traffic and selling more, you're just getting yourself out of business quicker. Uh, third one, you're not maximizing your transaction value on every sale. So you're not getting the biggest return you can from every sale. Fourth one is you aren't set up properly to get repeat sales. And then the fifth one is your conversion rate isn't set up to maximize the conversion for that traffic. If none of those are set up properly and we just go, let's do a Google Ads campaign or a Facebook and Instagram campaign and pay a fortune to get this traffic, and then we only get a measly return and we potentially lose money on spending all that money getting the customer in the first place. That's why it's important you get the other stuff lined up first. Now, if you're brand new, obviously you still need to get other stuff in there, but you do need to drive some sales too. But once you're at a point where you've got some sales, you need to go back and do the other levers first, then up the traffic. Now, I've got an example here with some figures in here. So in this example, they've got 60,000 new visitors to their site per year, which is 5,000 a month. Their conversion rate at the moment is 5%, which is a, a good conversion rate. So anything between five and 10% is what we class a good conversion rate. So that gives them 3,000 customers. These guys, their average order value or transaction value is 77 bucks and 52 cents. And the number of sales or repeat sales they get from that customer in that year is usually about four, 4.3. So that gives them a turnover of a million bucks. This is a pretty well-established e-com business, but we want to take it to the next level, obviously. Then their gross profit, so this is the percentage of sales that are left after paying their cost of sales, is 40%. Now, what I found is most e-com businesses, and it really depends what you're selling and whether it's your own product you've developed or not, but margins can range from 30 to 80%. 85%, depending whether, if you're manufacturing your own product and selling it direct to the public, your margin's gonna be higher. If you're buying from somebody else and just reselling, then your margins will probably be a bit lower. But this business here, it went for an average of about 50%, which is about average, and that's also after paying shipping costs as well. 
So you may not be charging for shipping on your site. You still have to pay for that ship shipping. So that is a cost of sale. I've also then taken 10% off for marketing. So marketing is obviously vitally important for your growth and development in your business. Now the rough rule of thumb, five to 10% is what people invest in marketing, five to 10% of turnover. Now it can be a lot more than that, especially if you're a new business, you're trying to grow or you're trying to aggressively grow and you want to invest it back in there. That's fine too, this is only a guide. I've got plenty of businesses where we're doing 20%, uh, 15 to 20%. Uh, but the business is growing and that's in the growth stage. So that's, that's good. And sometimes you would pay a bit more in marketing to grow in the future, especially if you've got a good repeat sales business. So it's really important that if you don't have a repeat sales business, that you're not spending over five or 10% on marketing. But I've put that in there as a variable cost. Then we've got the fixed cost of running the business, which is 300,000 at this point, which gives them a, a profit of 100,000 which is 10% of sales, which is about an average for a business. So that's, that's, that's where we're at here. Oh, well, that's where this business is at right now. So let's have a play around with it and see what happens when we, when we um, adjust some of these figures. So often one of the first things I'll do when I'm working with a client is go, okay, let's get control of your costs. That includes your fixed costs and your gross profit. So I'll sit down and go, okay, let's put a budget together of your fixed costs. Let's calculate the break even of running the business. And let's use that opportunity to review those costs to see if there's any costs in there that we don't need to pay and we could potentially save. And quite often we end up saving about 10% of those costs. So I put 10% in here and get rid of that. You can see instantly we've just got ourselves 30,000. So by shaving 10% of our fixed costs, there's 30,000 we've saved. Uh, and that, that, that's not hard to do in most businesses. Next thing I'll do then is review their gross profit margins. So it's really important that you know what your margins are on all your products. If you manufacture them, you've got to work out how much it costs to manufacture them. And if you buy them in, you've got to work out what your actual costs are. You need to include shipping in there. You need to make sure you're using the right costs. And you need to understand what margins you're making on each product. Then you can use that to say, okay, well, how can I improve that margin? And it may be in like a number of businesses, it's as simple as, okay, we needed a price rise. You haven't done a price rise for a while, let's put it up. And I've put up prices for, for clients by 10% and nobody's batted an eyelid. So you've got to be careful of your pricing and you've got to get it right, but if your margins are too low, that's a good way of increasing it. The other thing is then obviously looking at how you're buying, where you're buying from, if you can buy it from somewhere cheaper. If you're manufacturing, looking at where you can get cheaper uh, materials, work more efficiently from a labor perspective. But there's things you can do to improve your margin as well. So if we say we did a 10% improvement on the margin here, uh, let's have a look what that does. 10%. So you can see here, that's another $40,000 we've saved. So we're already up by 70 grand by just making those two small changes. And this is why we kind of build it up from the bottom as well, because it will have a compound effect as we go. Right, the next, next one then is, okay, let's look at our average transaction value. So this is obviously a really important stat, and all these stats and all these numbers you need to know in your business. So you need to measure them. What I do with my clients is I get them to set up a weekly report, and we look at every week at all these numbers to see how we're tracking. So we can then monitor that quite closely. So average transaction value, obviously you want to increase how much people buy from you when they come to you. And, and there's a number of different strategies you can use for that. It could be as simple as putting a bit of a bump at the end. Why don't you buy that with that? Uh, make, make sure you're positioning products that go with other products so that they're bundling to, to them together and having on offering bundles. All of that type of stuff you need to build into your site to make sure that that's there, to make sure we're maximizing our average transaction value. But again, let's, let's uh, for simplicity, keep this to 10%. Make a 10% improvement on that. So you can see here, and that means that I'm gonna be going from 77 bucks to 85 bucks. That now means our profit's gone up by 114,000. Now, the next lever you need to pull is repeat sales. Now, repeat sales can have a massive impact on your business, so it's really important that you work on this one. It's hard, actually, sometimes when you've got an econ business that's selling a product that people are only buying once. If that's the case, you need to make sure you're making a good margin on that product because you're going to have to pay to get that customer and you're going to always have to pay to get new customers all the time. They, are, they can be quite tricky, but it can work as long as you're making a good margin on the product and potentially looking at wholesaling as well. So 
you want to wholesale the product to other people as well, uh, which is really important too. But this is a really important one to look at uh, and one where you can really improve the situation. But this is where you want, I mean, you look at Amazon. Amazon obviously spend a lot of money on their site. They've got a lot of their products. You can subscribe to them. So when you subscribe to them, obviously then you're on an automatic auto ship thing. Uh, that's the holy grail. Uh, and businesses who do have a lot of subscribers, their value when they sell goes up massively. So that's the, that's the ultimate. Get people on your subscription list and build, build your subscribers. But also you want to make sure you're doing follow-ups. I just, I get some um, um, uh, powder, uh, so, uh, so health powder from, from a shop. Uh, and that lasts me about a month. I noticed just this year they've started emailing going, oh, it's time to reorder. Because they know, okay, you bought that product. That product will last, usually last people X amount of days. Let's send an email to remind them to reorder it. Uh, the other thing as well is when you get a new customer, make sure you're selling them on the benefits of your product. Make sure they're getting the habit of using your product. So you're reselling that and make sure you follow them up and teach them on that process and then also remind them when it's time to buy again. But there's different things you can do and obviously it depends on your, your, your industry, but you, it's an area you wanna work on because it can have a massive impact on your business. Uh, for consistency, let's just improve that by 10% again. Now you can see we've gone from 4.3 to 4.73. So now our profit's gone up by 162,000. Now we go to number five, which is then you work on your conversion rate. When you're working on your conversion rate on your website, there's two parts to that. There's the conversion we call add to basket, and then there's basket to checkout. So you want to separate those two when you're looking at your site, because there's different reasons why people might be converting compared to they might not be. So you want to make sure first and foremost, when people are coming to your site, one of the key stats you need to look at is your bounce rate. So if you think about your e-com store as a bricks and mortar store, bounce rates when people leave, people leave the store. So if you understand, okay, every, people are leaving as soon as they hit the, hit the store, we're probably sending the wrong type of traffic. If people are leaving on a certain page, then there's something wrong with that page and we need to work on that page. But work out where we're losing people, where they're not putting anything in the basket. That's that first conversion rate. Then obviously you have to make sure your site's set up properly with easy to buy buttons and, and easy options so everybody can see what's going on. Uh, this way you need, to, uh, you need to measure them separately as well. Because if, if you're getting people to the site and they're not putting it in the basket, then you know you've got to work on those areas. Now, if they are in the basket, but they're not getting to check out, this is abandoned carts. So abandoned carts are always a challenge on e-com businesses, and often it relates to shipping. So you need to be very careful with your shipping policy and what you, what you, what you want to do there. Free shipping is what customers like, but it's not always feasible. Depends on your product, the size of the product, the margins you've got in your product. Uh, but you need to think about that and make sure you get the pricing right. But yeah, abandoned cart is another one. But also, you'll see a lot of people will set up abandoned cart um, emails so, uh, or a process. So when someone abandons cart, we follow them up. And you do want that. You want those funnels everywhere. Those types of things will obviously help you with your conversion rate. But it starts with measuring it and then starts looking at those different areas. But say we improve that by 10% too. And that's just putting a 0.5 on there. So now we've got an extra 0.5 conversion. Now you can see here, by us working on those strategies, we haven't increased the number of traffic to our site yet. All we've done is improve what, with what we've got. And we've gone from 100,000 profit to 315,000 profit. So it's an extra 200,000 profit. So our, we've really kind of earned a lot more from doing that and got a 215% increase in profit and a 33% increase in our sales value. And we haven't even worked on getting new customers yet. So once your site and your business is set up to maximize those other levers, that's when you want to put the foot to the pedal to drive more traffic to your site. So we could have a play around with this. A 10% increase in traffic isn't much, and you want to be doing a lot more than that. But let's just put 10% in there and see what that does. So when we put 10% in there, now, you can see our profits got up a bit more. Our sales have now gone up by 46% and our profit is now 374. So we've added a bit there, but really what we wanna do is we wanna 10 times that. So here we've got a million dollar business 
So we've got a million dollars per year e-com store. We want to get to a million dollars per month. So if we tens times it, so that's 10%. Uh, so that'd be a thousand percent. 10 times that. Now you can see this is where we go from 6,000 to 660,000 visitors. So it's a big jump, but now we're at 14 million. So we can get to a $14 million business per year by worth us working on those other drivers, then working on driving traffic to the site. Obviously the, the strategies used for traffic is kind of goes under two main brackets and that's paid and what we call organic. So paid is usually Google ads, um, Facebook and uh, uh, Instagram, and you wanna be investing money in that. And you need to make sure that you're getting a return on your ad spend. And I got videos on that and how to calculate that. So check that out. But you have to make sure you are getting a return. If you are getting a return, then it's worth investing that money. And that will help you drive the traffic. Also, you've got organic st um, strategies, which is you know, your general social media, posting and content, as well as SEO on your website, as well as potentially looking at advertising on, on podcasts or other means. So there's lots of different ways you can do to drive traffic, but first things first, you need to make sure you're maximizing the other levers and you're making a profit and return on your ad spend, then yeah, dial it up, dial it up. But if you 10 times it here, you can see that's where you can get to a million dollars a month. So you need to 10 times that, but even if you, even if we just did 100% here, rather than 10%, which is double it, which you, maybe you can do in a year, you're not gonna 10 times it in one year. But in a year, you could double it, and that takes you to 2.6 mil turnover, which is an extra 1.6 million. So that's only doubling your traffic. So you go from 5,000 to 10,000. You could probably do that with a few campaigns. It's gonna cost you money, and this is where you need to make sure you get a return from it, but your paid marketing could drive that. And it's really important when you're running an e-com store to realize you're gonna to have to pay to a lot of money to Google and a lot of money to Facebook, because you're gonna to need to market the business. It's the way you get your traffic into your store. There's no point you setting up a great store that's set up to convert and has all the whiz bang things in it if nobody can find it. It's like opening a store in the street that nobody walks in. You don't do that. Paying Google is like paying the rent to the big shopping centers. It has to be done, but the beauty of it is we'll know whether you get a return in investment or not. So you need to do it. But let's say in a year you, you work on those first five and implement them, then you look at doubling your traffic. If you double your traffic, your profit could go, or your sales go from a million to 1.6 million. And here your profit's 900,000, but you're gonna need some more staff to manage the, the uptake. So your cost of sales takes, takes into account any staff for manufacturing, but if you need pick and pack, customer service, you're gonna need some people in there. But even if we put an extra three people in there, 300,000, you can see here, your profit's still gone from 100 to 600. So even if you had another extra 100 for excess rent or whatever it may be, you can still go from 100 to 500 based on that. And that's, that's often where you wanna start. But they're the six levers you can use to grow and develop your e-commerce business. If you'd like some help with that, please, there's a link below um, to, to book in a call. Uh, any questions, put some comments down there. I will put a link to this uh, calculator so you can get a copy of this as well. So you can chuck your figures and have a play with that too. And if you like this content and you want to learn some more, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers, guys. See ya.